Do you like cooking? Thank you for the pretty question. Yes, I do like cooking very much. In fact, cooking is one of my favorite tasks and I try to experiment with the different sorts of foods, while sometimes I am responsible in handling the foods for social gatherings at my home. Then I generally cook foods for the invited guests at the family parties organized by my parents. However, I have developed the interest on cooking by watching the cooking shows on television and reading recipe books and most importantly my parents also inspired me over the issue. I like to cook different food items while the Chinese foods are the most favorite one for me and my family. In most of the family parties, I prepare the Chinese dishes and the invited guests also adore the foods from their heart. Now, I am planning to participate in some reality shows dealing with cooking, and let the world know about my skills on cooking. Will you cook for your friends when they visit you? Of course, I will cook for my friends if they come to visit me. It is my duty to take care of them and as they are my guest, I will take as much care possible for me. In fact, it is all about decency. Someone is visiting my place and if I do not entertain them, they will have a negative impression over my attitude and manner. Moreover, since I am skilled in cooking, it would be a great pleasure for me to entertain my friends with different delicious food items. When I go to visit them, they treat me cordially and entertain me with homemade foods. So, it becomes a moral duty for me to cook for them. You know, I feel great when someone adores my cooking and bless me for the skill. Earlier, it was seen that people including my friends have praised my cooking and in fact, I have become famous among them for the cooking styles. Some of my friends visit my home often to have foods prepared by me. They are in love with foods prepared by me. So, I think it would be unjust if I refuse to cook foods for them, won't it? Who cooks for a family in your country? India is the country where the majority of men are wage earners while the women are homemakers. So, the issue of cooking goes on the women. The tradition has long been going on that women will be the homemaker and perform all the tasks necessary for maintaining the household. So, the women are playing the role and cook foods for all the other members of the family. Usually, they cook foods several times in a day. When the male members make hurry to go to their respective workstations, the women are to remain busy for making the breakfast. When the breakfasts are ready, they might be waiting to start preparing their lunch. Lunch preparation is a difficult task. Preparation of all the ingredients takes more time than cooking on the pot. Actually, the lunch preparation is divided into three parts. Firstly they have to gather and prepare all the ingredients then to prepare them and finally place all the ingredients into the cooking pot for being cooked. Usually, they cook more foods in the noon that serves in the night as well. But there are some families who cook foods separately in the meal hours of the day and domestic workers assist in the cooking process. Mostly the cooking at night is done when there are parties or guests are invited. What do you think of the advantages and disadvantages of fast food? Well, I agree that the fast foods have some advantages, but the number of disadvantages is more than the benefits. It is considered that the fast foods are easily available and saves time and cravings. Moreover, we can have it at any hour of the day. There are a good variety of such foods are available and the tastes are delicious as well. But in comparison to the advantages, the fast foods have many negative impacts on your health. Firstly they help developing fat on the human body which is entirely unwanted. Obesity is a common effect of having more and more fast foods. The food ingredients may help them meeting their hunger but the body cannot get any balanced nutrients from the foods. They provide huge calories with less nutritional value. Frequent eating of the foods may lead to greater health disorders. Usually, the caloric ingredients are found in the foods while the presence of vegetables, salads etc. and other nutritious elements are not found at all in the food. Why is fast food so popular? Um, the fast foods are popular for several reasons. Firstly they are of great taste and cheaper than any other foods. When people take fast foods they find a different taste, 
especially the spicy taste is the key attraction for the fast foods. Moreover, the foods are sold in a ready-made state. So, the consumers could have the foods whenever they want. Often the foods come with great offers and sold in packages which allure the buyers. Large fast food shelling stores and shops sell the foods in packages to attract consumers. Generally, in the packages, a couple of fast food items are sold together at a comparatively cheaper price. So, people are after the combo packages which ultimately lead them to the ruination of their health. Besides, the fast foods are shareable with the others. For instance, you have bought a piece of large burger and two chicken fries. You can share the burger and chicken pieces with the people around you and you do not need to pay extra for that. As there are a good number of foods are found, you can have the one you prefer most and also can place some special request to prepare the foods in your way, if necessary. Where would people in your country usually go when they eat out? Usually, people go to restaurants for their out-of-home eating events in India. They usually prefer the foreign restaurants like Chinese, Thai, and Japanese etc. Besides, there are some other restaurants which sell continental and traditional foods and have a specific group of consumers. When it is about celebrating any event or occasion and people want to taste a different type of foods, the arrangements are done. There are some star-rated hotels where the traditional foods are sold in line with the ordinary restaurants in the streets of India. In most of the cases, people do not want to go a long distance to enjoy the foods and try to sort out any nearby restaurants for the purpose. Often people do not go to the same restaurants twice as they are fond of change. When they have tasted the foods of a specific restaurant, they prefer to move on ahead to taste another one. It goes on like a circle. But I like the fact that when they go to eat at restaurants, they go in groups. What changes would take place in terms of people's eating habits in your country? Well, this is a weighty question to answer. The food habits are in fact changing. The trends of eating have greatly changed comparing to past 10 or 15 years. Earlier, people used to take food at home and the menu was limited in the traditional food items. But with the advancement and globalization, the food habits have changed to a great extent. People now take foods out of their home in most of the cases. The trend has become so as people are in a rush always and also have become mechanized. They, in fact, cannot manage time to prepare foods at home. Besides, the foods prepared at outsides are also delicious and cheaper in price. So, many of the working class people prefer eating foods out of their home. I think this is a new trend that some of the offices arrange for food for their employees at the office as the employees do not need to go out for lunch at the daytime. I think this trend may also get a massive change in near future as the number of such offices is on the rise. What food is popular in your country? Um, there is no particular food is popular but people in different states like to have their own traditional foods. Usually rice. Lentils and flowers are eaten extensively across the country. Those are the regular meal for the people. But sometimes they occasionally take meals differently and those are prepared with special materials. Fish of different types, mutton, chicken or pork is also preferred in different occasions. Foods prepared with fewer spices is more popular to the older people as they are habituated with the taste while the young generation prefers to have foods with different spices. The presence of vegetables is also notable among the foods of all classes of people. There are a good number of vegetarians found in India who prefer to have vegetables only in the meals around the day while the non-vegetarians take all types of foods. What is the difference between fresh food and canned food? Yup, there are some differences between fresh foods and canned foods. The fresh foods are directly collected from fields then marketed and finally cooked. On the other side, the canned foods are preserved after processing. For example, you have caught a fish from the river while you are buying canned fish from a superstore. Which one would be preferable to you? I think the fish caught from the river. Why? Because the fish is fresh. Though the canned foods are made with great care, they stay a longer time in cans which is unhealthy. Besides, 
the fresh foods are always tasty than the canned foods. The canned foods are mostly used when people do not have any option left. Usually, when people travel the sea for a longer time, they take canned foods as you cannot have fresh foods on the sea. What can we do to solve the problem of food shortage? The global population is on the increase and it is a challenge to feed the growing population. Most of the cases, people waste food products and the first thing, we can do, to prevent food shortage is not to waste food products. Generally, it takes a longer period to grow grains or cultivate food crops or to breed fishes and other animals. So, unless we are preventing the wastage of foods, it is not possible to solve the food shortage problem. The other way to solve the problem is to grow more staple foods. When people will have more staple foods around them, the pressure on any specific food grains will be reduced to great extent. Ancient cultivation should be changed and technology should be applied in agriculture. The rise of biotechnology is another important issue in this case. With the use of biotechnology, we could increase the food production. What are the advantages and disadvantages of family food? Oh, yes. There are some benefits and drawbacks of family food. Usually, family foods refer to take meals with the family members. When you will take foods with all the members of your family, you have to be careful. Often you are to take foods you do not prefer at all but the remaining members prefer that. Besides, you might have nothing to say about your preference. But there are some positive impacts found as well for having a family dinner. You will have the chance to meet and greet all the members of your family. Moreover, you can also place your demands on the meal time as all the members will be present there and a suitable solution may come out. Foods and Restaurant Why do you think people go to restaurants when they want to celebrate something? People mostly go to restaurants to celebrate a special day or a special event because that gives them a different experience than staying at home. They enjoy the view and the environment. Also, they can enjoy different types of foods that they usually do not cook at home. They can invite others and many people can gather at that place and that is more convenient than inviting all of them to gather in a house. The foods and dining experience could be brought with money and the host does not need to take any extra hassle to take care of every invited guest. Which are more popular in your country, fast food restaurants or traditional restaurants? Well, that varies based on the age group of people. Fast food shops are more popular among the students, teenagers and low-income class people while traditional restaurants are well liked by working class people and high-income group people. When people need to take a quick meal they often go to a fast food restaurant but when they plan to have dinner with his family, traditional restaurant is their choice. Why do you think that is? Well, having fast food is cheaper and does not offer a great dining experience. That is why people with less money mostly go to a fast food shop. On the contrary, a traditional restaurant offers a better dining experience but costs a lot of money. Some people say that food in an expensive restaurant is always better than food in a cheap restaurant, would you agree? No, I would not agree with this statement. Generally, expensive restaurants have better cooks, better environment and offer better service but this is always not the case. From my personal experience, I can say that I have many times enjoyed my dinner in a comparatively cheaper restaurant than in an expensive restaurant. My friends also have similar experiences. Do you think there will be a greater choice of food available in shops in the future, or will there be less choice? I think the choices would be greater in the future. If I compare my childhood experience, I can feel that we have more choices these days than it was before. The satellite TV channels, globalization, better transportation and migration facility will surely widen the number of menu offered in a good restaurant in the future. The choices have increased than in the past and will definitely increase in the future. What effects has modern technology had on the way food is produced? The modern technology has redefined the way people produce foods. From irrigation till kitchen, modern technology has made food production easier and more convenient. 
we can taste foods from other countries, can preserve them for a long, or cook a whole new menu only because of the technological advancement in recent years. How important is it for a country to be able to grow all the food it needs, without importing any from other countries? This would make a country self-dependent. They would be able to export many food items and thus they would become economically stronger. However, it is not practical that a country will produce all the food items their countrymen need and this is because foods and crops production are greatly dependent on weather, temperature and soil condition of a country. Some really large countries might become successful in producing all their necessary foods, but most of the countries would have to rely on importing foods that they do not produce. 1. Eating Habits 1. Tell me about the types of food that people eat in your country. Well, having foods is the most important issue to live on and there is a wide range of foods available across the world to meet the daily need of the beings on this planet. People in Greece usually take prepared and cooked foods of different items. You might know that the use of olive oil is a common issue for us. Besides, the cooks prefer applying lemon juice on the cooking process to bring a different taste and flavor. The very common food items of Greece include grains, different types of bread including loaves and dried bread, herbs, fish, meats, pork, rabbit, and poultry items etc. To prepare bread, the cooks usually require wheat and sometimes barley is also applied to the process. Besides, wine is another ever-present item in line with desserts. To prepare foods, the cooks need olives, yogurt, cheese and some other necessary spices and ingredients to raise the taste. The deserts are filled with honey and sometimes nuts of a wide category are also applied for variation. 2. How are the eating habits now in your country different from eating habits in the past? I'd say people eat more unhealthy food now compared to the past. They used to cook and eat a lot of vegetable dishes. But now because people are busier, they often eat pre-made food, for instance store-bought dim sums, instant noodles and pasta with pre-made sauce. How are the eating habits now in your country different from eating habits in the past? Thank you for allowing me the explanation of the eating habits of my country, Greece. The history of eating habits dates back to a long ago. You know that Greece is a historical country and the eating habits have been changed accordingly. With the development of time and culture, the food menus have greatly been changed and influenced by the foods of other nations. Earlier, people used to take different herbs and only one or two types of meats during their meals and bread in breakfast. But now the scenario has altered. I think you are aware that the Greeks are to remain busy during the day times and thus they take food out of home mostly in lunch. 3. How healthy is your country's food? It's not really that healthy I would say. A lot of Thai food is cooked in fat and oil, especially the street food which is often cooked in fat that is reused many times. Messages also added a lot. Also. There are now a lot of fast food restaurants that people eat at because it is convenient. My younger cousin already has diabetes and he is only 23 and I'm sure that is due to diet. And my father has a bad heart which is from too much cholesterol which I think has also been caused by the food. 4. Why do you think different cultures have different table manners? I'm not sure if you're asking about the daily manners or the manners for special events. But both of the manners are different among the diversified cultures of the world. To me, it appears that the table cultures are different in regions for several reasons. The first and important thing is that geographical locations have profound impacts on the table manners. The majority of the Asian people prefer taking foods using their fingers while the Europeans prefer forks, spoons and knives. It is done based on the types of foods. When the foods are larger is size, shape and hard then you are to take your share by cutting from the large food piece using the knife while when the size is smaller you can take the foods using spoons, fingers or chopsticks. 5. How may eating habits change in coming decades? With the culinary tradition of around 4000 years, Greece has experienced different changes in its cuisine with the passage of time and you are well informed that the coming days will be busier than the present days. 
thereby, the Greeks will have less time to cook and have foods. They may start depending on professional food providers to get their daily meals. So, the foods may not be the same as it is today. People may move for quick made foods like burgers, pizza, chips instead of traditional food items. 6. Tell me about the types of food that people eat in your country. People eat all sorts of foods in Japan. Especially young people, when they eat out, they like to enjoy international food, for instance, Italian, Thai, French, and Korean cuisine. I think at home, people still eat safe cozy Japanese food or basic Western food. 7. How healthy is your country's food? Japanese food is considered to be one of the healthiest foods in the world. I think it's true because it has a lot of vegetables, tofu, and sometimes fermented beans. Those are all good for you. Also Japanese food is not oily at all. They are nice and clean and often served in a small portion. So, you never feel bloated or sick after you eat Japanese food. Examiner, do you like to cook? Mandy not really no, most of the time I eat ready meals and takeaways, that's one of the reasons I love visiting my mom, you can always guarantee lovely home cooked food. Examiner, what time do you usually eat dinner? Michelle, we have our main meal at around 7.00, I'm usually starving hungry by then, in fact I often grab a bite to eat as soon as I get home from college, a sandwich perhaps but not too much to spoil my appetite. Examiner, are there any types of food you don't like? Lionel, no not really, I'm not a fussy eater at all, actually I eat like a horse, I do a lot of sport and work up quite an appetite. Part 2 Style Task Describe a restaurant that you like to use. You should say 8 Where this restaurant is 9 What kind of food it serves 10 How often you go there. And say why you like eating there so much. Howard, okay, this is a nice topic to talk about, there's a restaurant just around the corner from where I live, it's an Italian restaurant so as you'd expect you can eat various pasta dishes and pizzas and I usually go there with my family for a slap up meal if we have anything to celebrate, it's quite a posh restaurant, the kind of place you would take someone if you wanted to wine and dine them. We usually order a three-course meal, a light starter then a main dish, and I have quite a sweet tooth so I always look forward to the dessert. I usually order tiramisu, it makes my mouth water just to think about it, I'm always totally full up by the end. Why do I enjoy it there? Well, it's not cheap. My parents always foot the bill and we couldn't afford to go there regularly so it's always a nice treat. Part 3 Style Questions Examiner, how can we encourage people to eat more healthily? Anna, I think the best approach is to have everything in moderation, processed food won't kill you if you only eat it occasionally, but people should also be encouraged to eat a balanced diet, try to cook fresh ingredients at home a few times a week. Examiner, do you think people enjoy their food as much as they should? Flory, I don't know really. I suppose it's true that people will often eat a quick snack because they're bored not because they're dying of hunger, and often they just bolt it down and don't savor it, so yes, perhaps we could take more time over our food. Examiner, do you think cooking is a pleasure or a chore for people who have busy lives? Julie, well, whether you follow a recipe or make something up as you go along, I think cooking is a very creative process and cooking for other people is a particular pleasure, there's nothing more satisfying than seeing people you love tucking into something you've cooked yourself. Definitions 2. To be full up, to eat to the point that you can no longer eat anymore. 3. To be starving hungry, an exaggerated way of saying you are very hungry. 4. To bolt something down, to eat something very quickly. 5. To be dying of hunger, an exaggerated way of saying you are hungry. 6. To eat a balanced diet, to eat the correct types and amounts of food. 7. To eat like a horse, to eat a lot. 8. To follow a recipe, to cook a meal using instructions. 9. To foot the bill, to pay the bill.
10. A fussy eater, somebody who has their own very high standards about what to eat. 11. To grab a bite to eat, to eat something quickly, when you're in a rush. 12. To have a sweet tooth, to enjoy sugary food. 13. Home cooked food, food cooked at home from individual ingredients. 14. The main meal, the most important meal of the day, usually eaten in the evening. 15. To make your mouth water, to make you feel very hungry for something. 16. To play with your food, to push food around the plate to avoid eating it. 17. Processed food, commercially prepared food bought for convenience. 18. A quick snack, to eat a small amount of food between meals. 19. A ready meal, see processed food. 20. A slap up meal, a large meal. 21. To spoil your appetite, to eat something that will stop you feeling hungry when it's meal time. 22. A takeaway, a cooked meal prepared in a restaurant and eaten at home. 23. To tuck into, to eat something with pleasure. 24. To wine and dine, to entertain someone by treating them to food and drink. To work up an appetite, to do physical work that leads to you becoming hungry. How healthy is your country's food? Um. If you ask how healthy the foods are, the answer is they are 100% healthy. You can have the foods without any second thought. You'll be happy to know that when the foods are prepared, the issue of hygiene and nutrition is checked for several times by the cooks. Regarding the restaurants, sometimes the owners cross-check the preparations process and it is stricter at homes. So, there are no scopes to worry about the health issues related to the Greek foods. For the extraordinary and careful preparation process, the Greek restaurants attract more clients than any other European restaurants. Restaurants Why do you think people go to restaurants when they want to celebrate something? I guess everyone has their own reasons, but probably because it's not something they do every day, so it seems more special especially if it's an important occasion. The other big benefit is that nobody has to do the cooking or cleaning up afterwards so everyone can simply enjoy the celebration or event whichever it is. Nobody has to do anything. It's always nice to be waited on, so I think that's why most people prefer it. Which are more popular in your country, fast food restaurants or traditional restaurants? They're both popular but in different ways and for various reasons. I think fast food restaurants are popular for grabbing a quick bite or snack, as they are fast and you can usually find one nearby. Traditional restaurants are more popular for special occasions or going out for lunch or dinner at the weekend when people have more time to sit and enjoy the food and the ambience or atmosphere of the place. They usually cost more too, so maybe people don't go as often but they're still popular. I don't think anyone would consider going to a fast food place for a special occasion, unless it was a kid's birthday party or something similar, in which case it makes a lot of sense, as some of these places cater specially for such events. Why do you think that is? Why are they both popular? I believe that it's because they both have good and bad things about them, they both cater for different needs and situations and they both do what they do well, I suppose it depends what you are looking for when you want to eat. Some people say that food in an expensive restaurant is always better than food in a cheap restaurant, would you agree? In my experience it's not that simple. I've had some amazingly good food in cheap restaurants and some disgustingly bad food in a supposedly classy and expensive place. I think that's why word-of-mouth advertising is so important in the restaurant business. You simply can't guarantee that a place that looks expensive and charges a lot of money will indeed offer a better dining experience than a cheaper restaurant with fewer frills. The service can be just the same and the quality of food the same too, it might only be the surroundings that are more upmarket in reality. Domestic Food Production 11. What are some of the main food products, foods, that your country produces? Thanks for asking the question. Australia depends mostly on agriculture and as a result, the cultivation of agricultural products is more here. The country mostly grows wheat, oat, barley, maize, canola, sorghum, field pea, 
lentil, lupine, sunflower seed etc. more than the other products. Besides, some other animal food industries have bloomed here greatly. Among them, the most notable are beef industry, lamb industry and pork industry. Beef is considered as one of the main food products after wheat. Fisheries should also be noted here for their substantial presence on the list. Dairy products are also mentionable in this case as the number of dairy farms is not trivial. Most of the agricultural products are grown on vast tracts of lands and at the same time the animal industries are located out of the cities. There are no irrigation facilities available in the city areas and the city environment is not suitable for the crops. What are some food products that come from different parts of your country? Usually, the animal foods come from different parts of the country in line with some of the agro foods. The dairy farms and animal foods industries are located in different parts of the country and the foods are sent to the cities after having a perfect process. People mostly take the animal foods from the superstores of stores and they collect them from their respective sources. Besides, the wheat, barley and oat also come from different parts. There are no central systems to grow the products in the city. New South Wales produces the largest part of the wheat production in the country while Tasmania produces the lowest part of the oat. The cattle production is one of the most important sources for the beef industry and cattle is raised in different parts of Australia. What widely consumed food products are mainly imported into your country? Well, Australia is not a self-sufficient country in foods and thus requires importing foods from the other countries and world market. The most notable foods it imports include fruits, processed fruits, seafood, different types of vegetables etc. Though the vegetable production amount is notable, it needs to be imported for the massive consumption level. Vegetables are dominant in many of the Australian homes in line with the non-vegetable elements. Interestingly, Australia grows almost all types of agricultural products but it needs to import some specific products like processed fruits. Though the processed fruits are widely consumed by the citizens, there is no fruit processing industry in the state and thus the imports have turned into a profitable business for some of the Australians. Do you think it's important that a country is self-sufficient in food? Um. I believe it is impossible for a country to be self-sufficient in food production. But it is important to be because when a country starts importing foods from the other countries, the prices of the imported goods get a hike naturally. Then it becomes impossible for the ordinary citizens to get the foods. Only for geographical disadvantages, a country becomes infertile or unable to grow all sorts of agricultural products. The country deprived of the food products may replace the lacking with import and thereby, I do not think that it is important for a country to be self-sufficient in food production. Besides food and the product you mentioned earlier, what else is made in your country? Well, Australia is a country which produces more other products. The most notable elements are wool, sugar cane, poultry, nuts, cereal etc. A significant portion of the wool comes from the lamb industry. Poultry farms help meeting the poultry needs of the country. Fruit like apple is another important source of agriculture. Vast tracts of lands are used for apple production. But sometimes the productions are hampered for some specific disorders like droughts and deforestation. But in the recent years, there are no such disorders found. Australia exports its dairy products in the world and is considered as one of the influential entities in producing dairy and agricultural products. Do you think the globalization of industry and commerce is a good thing? The view I own over the issue may be different. I actually do not believe that the globalization of industry and commerce is good for the countries. There are few reasons behind my belief. Firstly, when an industry is transferred to the other countries for globalization, it actually loses its uniqueness. Besides, the quality of the produced also gets down. For instance, you are skilled in making sculptures and you have an industry in your own country. I am unskilled about the making or process and if I am to replace you suddenly, the results will be worst for my being novice. The issue about the industry is the same. 
When a traditional industry is shifted to another country or culture, it is a bit difficult for that industry to survive. So, it appears to me that the idea of globalization, especially in the commerce and industrialization, is not good to some extent. Do you think every country should make everything it needs or should it import some things? Um. This is a very technical question to answer. It actually differs in certain cases. As I said earlier that it is impossible for a country to be self-sufficient, it is possible for the country to be moderately able enough to support the needs of the country. Definitely, it is impossible for a country to be self-reliant from every aspect but it could produce the necessary things it needs in a sufficient quantity and sometimes it could also sell the excessive produces to meet its own needs. When the unused parts of the productions will be exported, it is expected that the costs for import could be adjusted to some level. What are the disadvantages of a country producing everything it needs? This is true that a country is unable to produce all the things it needs but if it is done in some cases, there would be some negative impacts on the overall economy, I think. When a country will be self-reliant, it will not need any more to import anything from the world market and as a result, the relationships with the other countries will be reduced. Besides, the products inside the country will be cheaper and smuggling of different products which are not produced at all in the country may rise to some larger extents. The currency rate may also fail which will lead to an economic disorder in the country.